Plastic, who's going to talk about continuous improvement, DevOps and mental health. This is actually <laughs> a talk that I want to go to the open space for. If you're like me, then you're going to go to open space five during the third open space block. So without any further ado, take it away. All right. Hi, I'm Aaron. Uh, I'm going to talk about the things he said. Um, it's really convenient to put them all on your title slide, so that way no one has to remember. We can just read it. Um, yeah, so you can uh, Twitter about things or whatever else. Oh, I should do, this is me. Um, well, that's Halloween me. This is not Halloween me. Um, there's a subtle difference. Uh, so I work uh, I do on the community team at Elastic. Uh, feel free to reach out to me about this talk or whatever. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Craze, which is ironic. Um, <laughs> I'm going to acknowledge the irony, and then we'll move past it. Um, and then that can be a story for another time. Uh, so I want to call out a couple of organizations as we jump into this. So uh, there's a group called Open Sourcing Mental Illness out there. Uh, they do awesome work in the field of mental health and tech. Uh, I was previously with a group called Prompt, who supported me and encouraged me to like share my story about mental health and technology. Uh, we recently rolled into uh, Osme. So open sourcing mental illness, osmehelp.org is where they come from. And uh, I should mention Elastic, because they're awesome and have decided to keep paying me while I come out and talk about mental health. Uh, and this is like all I'm going to mention about Elastic. But they care about humans enough that they're willing for me to come out and talk about this instead of like what makes an Elastic stack. Cool. So uh, I have ADHD. Uh, I don't, this picture has nothing to do with it. I just really liked it. So uh, <laughs> I was like trying to find, there's no good picture for ADHD in like the stock photo libraries. And so I've got, uh, I forget what I was searching at the time, but I was like, all right, that works. Um, so yeah, so ADHD is not entirely about, it's not just like, oh look, squirrel. I like that's part of it, but it's not <laughs> really what's driving it uh, underneath. Um, so largely what it is is dopamine deficiency in the brain. It doesn't function correctly, um, which leads to poor working memory because dopamine tends to help connections in your brain and make things connect. So when you have poor working memory and you can't always keep everything in your head at once, uh, it leads to executive function problems. Uh, so, what's executive function control? Wandering attention, this is the part of your brain that's constantly paying attention to other stuff in the background. Ideally, this is so when you're, you know, maybe hunter-gathering and you're trying to look for berries in the woods, you don't get eaten by a lion, right? It's paying attention, like, what's going on? Oh, is this interesting? Is this dangerous? Should I pay attention to this? Um, but I've got, like, a really bad anomaly sample because I have poor working memory. Like, I don't have a good sample set to say, hey, this is different, but it's not interesting, right? So everything that pops up on the side becomes really interesting for me. Uh, I can do the opposite. We can dive down and hyper-focus. This is like that great flow state that everyone wants, which is really good if you can control it and really sucks if it's like on Wikipedia late at night. <laughs> um, which also goes to sense of time. ADHD tends to think of now and not now. Sometimes we can sort of grasp later and previously, um, but now and not now larger than like, you have five minutes to do this. I'm like, I don't know how long that is. Um, so yeah, so someone will have to yell at me when I inevitably go over 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> emotional regulation is part of it too, right? If you have good working memory, you can hold that like, I am feeling this emotion. This is an appropriate way to react. Uh, as opposed to with ADHD, tend to be very binary, right? Like, I am feeling this right now all of the way. Like there's none of the like slow ability to process that and move forward. Uh, and impulse control. Uh, tend to move towards risky behaviors. Um, there's also this thing, this I just learned about, like this is a cool concept I heard about two days ago, uh, called the wall of awful. And uh, the idea is all of us sort of have these walls of awful, right? They're that thing that prevents you from doing what should be a really easy task, but it just seems insurmountable. Like paying that late parking ticket, right? Like it should be really easy to do this. Um, but what happens is through past experience, we build up these walls of failure, right? Like, I failed to do this. And then you have uh, this failure brick that gets added. And then you have disappointment that comes along with that. Maybe from yourself, maybe from others. Maybe you perceive that others might be disappointed. That still counts. Um, and so if you have a brain that spirals through all these, you tend to add these bricks really quickly. They tend to be in lots of places, like um, starting to write a presentation for uh, a talk that you have to give, right? Sometimes there's this really hard, upward, emotional work battle you have to get through before you can start. Um, 
part of it's also, as ADHD has this all or nothing response, right? Like when I'm writing a presentation, it doesn't feel done until I've completed it. So I don't want to start it today if I can only get one slide done. Like that doesn't seem like enough time to do it. And then I'm not going to have it completed. So there's just this lots of other thoughts that go along with it. Um, so this doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing. Like ADHD talks about a disorder and we talk about mental illness, which feels like it's something you'd want to get rid of or heal completely. Um, but I think we prefer to talk about neurodiversity, right? It's just my brain functions differently. Uh, we're really good in emergency situations. ADHD is really great at incident management um, because what happens in these high stress situations, is we tend to get calm at that point, right? We tend to function normally. So um, when you have trauma, something you're trying to assess, right? Like it's a great transition to this talk. Uh, we can kind of jump in and see the situation for what it is and start working on stuff, usually because we're not worried about all the risks of any given action. We're like, this seems like it'll help, and then you can go along and worry about it. Um, it's good for those sort of live, in-the-moment activities. Um, really terrible at long timelines, like I said, right? Like, trying to prepare a talk here, it's like, okay. Uh, or, or writing a book, right? If I decide I want to write a book, if I don't define that, like, writing 1,000 words today means I'm done, right? If I don't take the moment to actually define that task, suddenly I have to do the whole thing or else it doesn't feel worthy. It doesn't feel worthwhile. It feels like I've failed to complete it. Um, I have a hard time like doing this iterative draft thing, which is what most people are, like that's the whole idea of Agile, right? Start, get something out the door and then continue to refine it. I tend to want to refine as I go along. Um, so this causes some problems like with school and things like that. Uh, and it tends to bring along other emotions with that as well. Uh, so for me, um, like high school provides a lot of forced external structure, which is really beneficial for folks with ADHD. Uh, and so when you go from that to a college environment, which is much more self-started, much more self-driving and internal motivated, uh, that was a real issue. Suddenly, I, I, turns out I didn't actually learn how to learn stuff properly with the way my brain functioned. Uh, so I fell into depression in college twice and dropped out twice. Um, which is expensive mistakes to make, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's part of it, right? These other conditions come along with it, and they cause other problems in your life. Uh, anxiety is an issue, especially when you have that task that's coming up that you know you should have started that you haven't, which, by the way, is more added to your wall that you have to climb before you can start it, because now you already haven't started it and have already failed before you started. Um, it creates anxiety. I've had lots of issues with this. Earlier in April, I had a panic attack before the month started because I had a ton of travel and a ton of talks that I had to do that weren't prepared. Uh, and so I was up all night dealing with that. Um, yeah, so there's, there's lots of other mood conditions that come with this as well. Uh, so this is, this is challenging, right? Especially as we work in an industry of technology, right? This is largely an intellectual industry. It's not like a you physically build the code and people are employed to like put pieces of code together and hammer them in the right order. Um, it's largely an intellectual job. And a lot of us, especially we're at DevOps days, right? This is a core not just of what we do as a job function, but a lot of us consider this something that we're really passionate about. We tend to tie our identities into what we're doing. Uh, and so when you have failures to work correctly in an industry that has to do with your brain, and your brain's not working the way you expect it to, and that's tied to part of your identity, um, that can be challenging, right? Any, any failure in that case starts to become more painful. Um, and this isn't a story, I don't think I'm alone in telling the story, and I think with you here is probably a self-selected sample as well, but uh, mental illness is actually pretty common. <laughs> uh, so anywhere in the US, in any given year, I think this was like 2018 or something like that, 5% uh, of any folks would have a severe mental illness in the US, right? So that's one in 20, would have their daily life affected to the point where they might not be able to work a day or two. 20% uh, will have any experience of mental illness. That's one in five. I mean, that's a number of people in this room, let alone how many people are at the conference? 450, 450 right? So one in five of that, I don't, I'm not going to do that math off the top of my head. Um, but whatever one in five of that is, uh, that's, a, that's a significant number, right? It's almost 100 people that will have some experience with mental illness. Uh, Osme did a survey in 2016 which has to be taken with some grain of salt, right? It's a mental health survey and people are self-reporting. So there's some accuracy challenges there, but 42% of all people that took that survey 
reported, yes, I have some experience with mental health in tech. And I don't think it's wrong to say that more people in tech probably have some experience with mental health issues than general. Um, it, it seems to be my experience too, anecdotally, like running into a lot of folks that, that have that. And so I think to not talk about this or to, to not share it because just my story would be a miss, right? I think this applies to a lot more people out there. Um, so here's where, where I started thinking about this, right? I've had these uh, mental health issues, and in my experience now, jumping into DevOps and thinking about complex systems, I've realized that humans are, are complex systems too. We operate in similar ways. Like we built, we're, we're made up of little, th like the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and the cell like builds your skin, and like that works in some part of your body, and all these little microservices have a job to do, and only by interconnecting them do we get humans, right? So like there's a lot of complex structure that's going on there. Um, and the hallmarks of complex systems, right? There's nonlinear relationships. Stuff's always changing. Like the same input doesn't always equal the same output. There's lots going on all the time. Um, so in thinking about this, thinking about, well, what, is, what do I define with, with mental health and mental illness? How can I get a better grasp on this myself and make sure I'm operating in a way that's, um, that's useful, right? That's like, how can I make sure I'm moving the direction I want to? Uh, and observability is one thought, right? Like when we have really complex systems, how do we figure out what's going on under the hood? Well, we need some way of asking questions arbitrarily of the system and say, hey, what's going on here, right? And I think it's easy, it's easy for me, and I'm sure it's easy for other people to, to miss that step with ourselves, right? To just power through like, man, why isn't this working? I don't know, I'm gonna keep going. Um, and we wouldn't do this with our computer systems, right? We wouldn't just keep plowing ahead if stuff's not working the way we expect it to. We need to take a moment and step back. Um, emotions play a large role in how I interact with the world, and I think it does for a lot of people. Um, this is actually, this is a feel wheel created by a friend of mine, John Sowers, um, who, if you check out the website, it's emotionalapi.com. He has a talk called Hacking Your Emotional API, which is a really cool talk. Uh, and he uses this as a way to talk about emotions. But again, uh, I have ADHD, and that's way too many for me. So let's do six. Um, <laughs> It's easier for me when I'm checking in to do broad strokes, right? So this is a way I can check metrics for how I'm feeling right now and how that might influence the actions or the thoughts that I'm having as I go through. Um, and a check-in can be really simple. It's just taking a moment to yourself, taking a deep breath and getting in touch with what's happening in your body. So. It's like, okay, right now I'm, um, so I can say right now I'm feeling scared, right? I've got to give this really personal talk in front of people and hope that it matters and that people care about it. Uh, so I'm scared that it might not work out as well as I'd hope. Uh, I'm happy that I was asked to come here and talk about this topic that I think is really important. I'm excited that it will help someone here. Uh, and I'm tender. There's a lot, I have a lot of DevOps friends, so I love coming to these conferences and feel connected to everybody whenever I, I am in these moments. Um, so just taking that moment, it's like, okay, I understand what's going on. I kind of understand where that's coming from, and that can help me move forward. Now I've got a, um, a waypoint, right? Like if you check any metrics on your system, okay, here's what's going on. Um, error budgets are a big thing too, right? So as I'm going through and I screw something up, like that's, that's okay, right? That's not the end of the world. It's trending that we care about. Like this is the whole idea of error budgets is if we make a mistake or two, it's, it's probably fine. Like no one really cares that much. Maybe there it is, like there's other caveats here. Um, but the idea is not to beat ourselves up over every mistake that we make, and that's hard to do. <laughs> but this is what helps defeat that wall of awful building, right? If we make a mistake and we immediately, ah, oh, I'm terrible, How I'm so stupid, how could I do that? Like, that's gonna continue to create problems and compound it. But if I can say, okay, um, you know, I didn't get done what I wanted to, well, what did I do instead? Okay, I did this, this other thing instead. Um, well, that's not so bad, I only missed out on you know, 1% of the error that I want to do. And I've got tons of range. I've still got time to fix it. We're not like completely going off the rails here where I'm gonna just fall off the face of the earth and not complete the work that I need to get done. So that's all right. We need to have some budgeting in there to make mistakes. Because uh, especially if you're affected by mental health concerns, like your brain functions differently than other people. Uh, and it comes into blame more retrospectives too, right? So that's, that's getting into that moment. When something goes wrong, we can accept the fact that we've got these feelings around it of, uh, probably shame if we've done something wrong. We're probably blaming ourselves more than other people are blaming us. Uh, and it's important to acknowledge that and move past it, right? Give ourselves some forgiveness. Because um, ultimately, 
your performance on a given task is not why you're there, right? Like most companies don't hire you because you're going to be 100% perfect all the time. They hired you for the way that you think about problems and the way that you solve problems. Uh, and I think there's a lot of value in having a lot of neurodiversity on a team too, right? As someone with ADHD, I approach a problem differently than someone who doesn't have that. Um, and I provide a lot of value just from doing that, not necessarily because I'm 100% perfect all the time. Uh, so this is, uh, another <laughs> this is another scenario. Uh, sometimes I can, no, often. Often my to-do list can just grow insurmountably, right? And it becomes that same all or nothing problem where I can't think, oh, I just need to accomplish one thing. I think I have to accomplish this whole mountain of to-dos and it can become this crushing anxiety. So. For me, it's about work in progress. Uh, this was a day, I want to say it was just after I organized DevOps Days Hartford for the first time. Uh, sort of crushing <laughs> anxiety and depression after that. There's just a lot of work that I put myself through. Uh, and what happened was I still felt like I had all this I needed to accomplish afterward. Uh, and what I had to do was just take my to-do list down to one thing before I could think about completing it, and that was get out of bed. <laughs> And I accomplished that, right? Great, I can check that off. And that gave me enough motivation to do the next thing, right? Like, all right, take a shower. Great, I can do that. It's like, all right, brush your teeth. Great, now I'm out of time for my day. That's it. That's all I could have gotten done that day. That was the maximum amount of effort I could put in. It took until like 10.30 at night. But, but I did it, right? And I didn't do nothing that day. And that made it so much more powerful to do something rather than absolutely nothing. Um, so yeah, brief recap. We're complex systems. There's a lot going on below the surface of what we see. Uh, so get you, get you some observability, right? Like that's the point that we do with we build complex systems, we build ways to observe them. We are complex systems. We need to think of ways to observe what's going on inside ourselves. Um, take some, like we care about trends, not moments. We want to give ourselves some grace when stuff goes wrong. Manage your work in progress. Sometimes like get out of bed is your work for that day, right? If you're having one of those days, take it down to the very single steps, do one at a time put everything else in your backlog. Uh, check out osmihelp.org and emotionalapi.com, and we're going to go into an open space, so we can keep talking about this, and that's what I hope to do. That's my last slide, I think. Yep. <laughs> All right, everybody, give them a big round of applause. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, as somebody who also like struggles with mental health, it's very powerful to get up here and like bare your soul in front of everybody. So. <laughs> Open space five, slot number three, if you want to continue this conversation, uh, and I encourage you all to do so. All right, thank you so much.